it is time for the semi-final for the lead world championship and as we look at the top 10 Sarah Chopper but and Mia Crample making it and Zhang Kim okay two first athletes out Oscar Baudrill from Canada Camilla Maroney from Italy I think Oscar and Camilla both missed out on semi-finals in bordering a couple of days ago yeah good point Camilla especially I would have thought she would have made it through but she didn't I think she was only a few spots away and Oscar also climbed well, and then he, it still wasn't enough for him to squeeze himself into the semi-final. So I'm, so I'm excited to see the performance in Elite World today. Me too. And Oscar was screaming his way up the quali route. I could hear yeah? the power screams. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It was way back in the stadium. I heard that man shouting. It was 21st in Boulder. So yes, he was outside of the semis just by one place. I know looking good. So Camilla's on the 55 degree section and we both, oh wow, a fig four there in the middle. I didn't see that, that's cool. Figure four when you put your leg over your arm in order to make the next move. We didn't see that toe either for Oscar. <laughs> yeah, he's got that big toe hook in. It's less steep for Oscar. And I think uh, the men's is more of a resistance style route. But there's a tricky move coming here. We think there's gonna be a heel. He gets the right heel. And then you saw that with the right hand. Mm -hmm. And the cross. And then a bit of complicated section starts right after this. Yeah, both athletes quickly getting up towards the halfway point, which is what we expected. But I think for both of them, the crux is, or the harder part of the wall is coming now. Yeah, especially for men, I think it starts now. With, from like turning yellow and purple to red. Holds. Yeah, because that right foot he briefly, the volume he briefly put his foot on is not very good, the yeah. angle of it. And the other side is Jura Taxi, you can't really stop on it either. No, so Oscar will shake for a moment. Camilla Maroney as well. She starts to approach the harder section of this women's route as she comes up. And for women, I think crimpy section starts just now with quite simple sequence, but all the crimps looks kind of like open hand, so you can't really grab hard into it yeah you're right it's kind of pinchy isn't it yeah either side of the volumes here and it's three in a row she makes those nicely right foot drilled in as she comes up again and Oscar starts to traverse and I, I believe it's like another toe hook move here oh yes that was a good catch for him ah uh, Camilla falls and Oscar falls well there we go two athletes done I was about to say, if you are watching us from Europe, congratulations. I think it's like 6 a.m. there. So you are a true fan if you're hearing our voices live. Right, Osh McKenzie comes on. And then Giorgio to Matis. There is Giorgio. Looking forward to see what Osh has got up her sleeve for today's competition. She She's also got a lot better in lead shape as well, right? Yeah, like quite recently as well. She was fourth in copper. And it, it surprised me. You know, I'd expect her to make semi-finals, sure, but to do that well in the finals is super impressive. I think she surprised herself. And then she went and got a bronze medal, her first ever medal in Prague. So she's on form, but she did miss out on the podium for the boulder, came seventh. She doesn't do the fig four, but she does get a high left foot. I'd be curious to see what shorter athletes in the semi-final would do in that section. Maybe they would, chose, they would choose the figure four, mm. like Camilla did. Yeah, and I wonder if they read that, or whether she just did it. Oh, now Georgia is trying to stretch up to that toe hook we saw Oscar, Oscar do, and he doesn't like it, and he's in a bit of trouble here. He's got to commit to one of these options. And that right heel is not on a good hold, but it has worked for him. Oh, it is, uh, 23rd in Copper in his last World Cup comp. He doesn't look as comfortable as Oscar did at the moment. It's still hard to tell for me how much he has left in his tent. And he's quite low down still at the moment, not quite at the halfway point yet. Osh climbing pretty quick, which is what we sort of expect from her. She's 
I've still got that sort of bolder mentality occasionally. It's like, just go fast. It is efficient, though, for them to climb faster so so that they have shorter time holding onto a hold. So they, don't, they have to squeeze lots. Mm -hmm. So I think it's quite smart for, like, mainly borderer to try to climb faster than, like, elite climber when they can control their own pace and they have maybe a little bit more in the tank for elite climbing. Yeah, I think I would agree with you. I think as long as you don't rush it too much. And also, we have seen lead routes get a bit more bouldering as well. You know, there's yeah, there's recently, mm. there's been quite more of a jump. Or like a foot swing, or a lot more, a lot more moves that we often see on bouldering to be on a lead route. Yeah, I would agree. So, Giorgio Tomatis falls in the pretty much the same place as Oscar went. Looked like he uh, just literally couldn't hold on anymore. It was one of those, just, nope, <laughs> that's not going to work. Osh has found a sort of a rest here. She approaches the big angle change on this wall. Now, the top half of the women's route, I certainly kind of gave up reading because I, I really don't know how you get through that sequence. There's no text holds at the very top. I think the setters are expecting to make most of their separation up there on the mm -hmm. head wall. But there's a big move coming up here. Now, there's a left hand and then there's a right hand, which when we saw it, I said, no, no, that's a foothold. <laughs> it does look like a foothold with how Oshie was trying to hold it. And she's certainly only going to use it as an intermediate. It's just sort of like, hold and go, and she makes a slap. That was a good stick for her. Oh, she falls after that. A big fall plummeting back down to the ground. So you want to keep your upper body as high as possible when you reach that hold to get your feet higher up sooner. Yeah, well, our camera's frozen there, but now we can see Giorgio rotating through, getting that right foot on. He does look already pumped, passing this purpose section here. Maybe yeah. that toe hook method that you were talking about, mm -hmm. he was struggling. I think he was. I think when you make that much uh, indecision like that, it's tricky because you sort of, you know, you think, do I go right, do I go left? It starts to burn your arms. It also gets in your head. Did well to recover, though, after that. And this was Osh crossing the first of the angle changes. Second angle change. Got it. The right. <laughs> Notice. You tell it underway. And then we just saw Juliet Fisser. Fisser, sorry. Julia was in the commentary box in copper with me. First time she was doing that. Pretty great to have her. Right, both athletes now underway as we ease our way through this semi-final. The final will take place tonight at, I've got no idea when it takes place, 8 p.m.? I think it's 8 p.m. Let me check the schedule. Mm. Yeah, it does say it starts from 8 p.m. Okay, so we'll be with you from 7.55. All right, Julia swinging around here, locking into that left hand, but it was a bit of a wild start from her. Nice clips now down low. Team Austria. It's Jesse Piltz in second place for this semi-final. I know how hard Julia has been training recently. She's looking strong. He chose pretty dynamic method to get through there. He did, didn't he? And so does Julia. Both of these athletes' legs are flying wildly. Julia has been quite dynamic in that section over there. And then it's kind of a shame that people can't really see how steep he actually is with how close up it is. Maybe now, thank you. Yeah, it's always hard to tell, isn't it? Have a look at the quick draws. You can see them hang. It's 55 degrees, which is one of the steepest angles we can kind of have on a, on a lead wall at this level. I talked to one of the Korean athletes who usually climbs here for lead training the other day, and he's like, you can only have jugs or jugs in that. Yeah, I had a similar that thing. Because they don't want everyone falling off down low, but it's yeah. so steep. It's a challenging one. Now, Jonas is really battling here. Those elbows are going up as he elevator door style presses. Look at the adjustments he's making. This is going to be burning him so much and he does fall. He was in real trouble there. 
that section looked quite uncomfortable. Oh, he might have had a bit of an injury there as well, so we hope he's okay, holding the bottom of that knee. Juliet still going into the pinches now, or through the pinches anyway, into these side pulls now. I wonder if she used a bit too much power in the overhead hanging section. Now, how much you got left after it. Both of them were really wild. Look at that big move in Jonas. And Julia didn't go for the foot like Osh did. She didn't go for the fig four. She kind of launched across, and that might have cost her a bit. That's how I read the route, though. Mm. You would have campus through that section. I looked at it and I thought about figure four, but I've never been able to do figure four <laughs> in my entire life yet in 20 years of my climbing experience. So... Cho Gaeyong. Gaeyong? Gaeyong. Gaeyong. I am very posh. Campusing up at the beginning anyway. Nice smooth moves from him as he gets his semi-final underway here. Now we've got 26 athletes in the semi-final. A cleaning break in the middle. And choke here. She starts off her route as well. Is there a lot of... Do you know much about... the? Because you live in Seoul now. Do you know much about the Korean team in the same way as you are with the Japanese team? Nope. <laughs> I am really close with Chan, so I know like talking a little bit. We just say hi to each other if we see each other, but we don't have like a deep talk about like how they performed. I do with Chan all the time. I was quite surprised when he took the slab in bordering. I was too. It's great to see though. Oh, look at this. She was a bit wild. She got the feet on, but then popped them off. I wonder if that was a bit of kind of waste of the endurance for her. I'm not sure there is a super efficient way through that section. See, your four looked quite decent. Mm. I think you've got to burn a bit. Like you have to make the decision to sort of power through a little yeah. bit. She reaches up above his head, makes that clip now. And he's going to look for either a toe or a heel or nothing, just campuses. The right doesn't look really good, though. No, he's a bit hesitant, isn't he? Making lots of foot movements, that arm a bit bent as he sets himself for the undercling. And this was the big move that you thought it was kind of going to be hard for them. Yeah, I thought so, but I, I always struggle to see distance when I'm looking up at a lead wall. <laughs> I know, that sounds ridiculous. But what I mean is, like, things look further away to me <laughs> than they actually are. I mean, that's why they have, what is it called, microscope? Mm -hmm. uh, binoculars. Huh? Binoculars. I Wait. don't think I can pronounce that right away. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have some, have some time to you, practice. You gave me a look then, which is just like, <laughs> what have you just said? Yeah, binoculars, the, the things they use on the ground to look up at the wall so they can spot. Uh, it just bang and flies. So, Shin Yun, Yun now. He's kind of recovered, but he's done some pretty nasty crimps shaking out. Pinches now on the right. It's in a heel. Gets this clip sorted out. I think Yun's in some trouble here. They both kind of look... Yeah, Maybe he recovered a little bit going back to the crimp. That was kind of smart. I was a little bit worried about it because his elbow mm. is quite up. This section, I think, is really physical. It just steps things up a notch. Goes on the right. So that, I think, is going to leave her outside of a finals place. And she has just a yeah, big deep breath as she hit the ground again. She's done pretty well here, but this next move is sort of crutchy, I think. There's a tiny jib he sees with the right foot. He's looking all right. That's a high point. Now Oscar got a little bit higher. Oh, he just got it? here, and he matched, and he couldn't get the next one, if I remember correctly. Yes, no, I think you are right. 
He's shaking out on every move here. That's awesome. Uh, that section just comes at you suddenly, doesn't it? Just sneaks up on you, the pump. I like that too, yes. And it's, it's pretty deliberate by the setters. And it, not only does it allow you watching at home to know where the athletes are on the route, because you can kind of lose yourself when we're this tight. But yes, I think to the athletes, they know that something is going to change when the color changes. Yeah, and it's usually, I've been in the elite setting team for the World Cup just once. Mm -hmm. But it's usually, for me, it was a combined, so it was a point system. So every point changes, mm -hmm. we had the color change as well. So that it's easier for judges to see and it's easier for like athletes to read the route as well. Yeah. And there is someone you know pretty well. Futaba Ito out on the stage and then Masahiro Higuchi on the left. So she specifies herself as a border climber. Mm -hmm. And she's been quite vocal on Instagram. She was talking about how, you know, after the OQS and you know, not qualifying, she just wasn't that into comp climbing, needed to walk away a bit and reset. From talking to her, do you think she has done that? Like, has she got her psych back for comp climbing? Uh, slowly but surely, I think. She took her time and then she's still taking her time until the next season starts. But for her, not only for her, but for a lot of people who prepare for Olympics or OQS, it was really mentally really hard and long season for them because it was never ending. Mm -hmm. And also she was up against her teammates. You know, she yeah. was directly fighting Miho Nanaka for a place, for example. And that's got to be tough. Yeah, she said she was happy to be competing against Miho for a spot because they are really good friends mm -hmm. to start with. But, like, as much as she's happy for Miho to make it to Olympics, I can't really imagine how heartbreaking it was for her yeah, to she wants miss a spot by so. a few spots. Yeah, you can be as much friends as you want, but the Olympics is the Olympics at the end of the day. Yeah. And she looked very impressive with the bottom of this route. No drama so far. Rocking up on that right wheel as well. Well, Masahiro Higuchi. Oh, elbows are coming up on this move as he crosses through. From what I know, he has a bit more left after his elbow starts to go up. Because mm -hmm. he's a, like very much a weak climber. So he can recover and sort of get something back, even though he looks pumped. I don't think he's pumped yet. Really? In my opinion. <laughs> that elbow, I was like, oh, he's gone. He might have been doing it on purpose so that he doesn't have to press anything rip really hard onto the open hand crit. Mm -hmm. I've seen some people do that before in elite climbs. Interesting. Could you tell them not to? Because it really <laughs> confuses me. It's just not fair. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's super pumped already. <laughs> but from what I remember, because I've known him for a while as well, well, we'll never know, I guess. It, you can run down and ask him, just be like, look, I know you're, you're recovering here, but were you pumped? But whatever, he has fallen off. But Futaba Ito is looking good. Oh, no, she's not. As I said it, the foot popped. Let's have another look at this again. So this is Masahiro Higuchi, who... This is coming up to the point where I thought he was bumped. Which was... He was looking through. Oh, good through here. It was the next section on the crimps. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe he was already pumped. It's impossible, mate. You're never wrong. And Futaba Ito reached up. This was dead down low. I thought she looked really good on this section. Mm -hmm. Swinging those legs, committing to the moves. I want to see the foot pop. You want to see the foot pop? Well, I want to see what happened. Mm -hmm. This was lower. I think she was trying to engage her some of her body weight onto the right foot, and it slipped out. Well, that was it. Well, she wasn't. She didn't have the right foot on anything. I think she was just on the on the slope. Then she had it on the cramp okay. that was like right below on the volume, and then maybe she just had it a little bit. Two out. Okay, next up, Max Berton, and then Rosa Reca, another youngster from Slovenia. And you can see that with Max. You know, he's in his first season, there's no expectations on him, even though we know how good he is. And Rosa, uh, in the BISU, which is the University Championships, she was third. But the really big one for her was the gold medal in lead at the Youth World Champs in China this year. She's one to watch out for, as is this man.
a little bit more humid today as well, the conditions. Like, there's lots of clouds overhead. I hope it doesn't rain later today, but I'm not, I haven't checked for the forecast. Me too. Hopefully not. There is a big old roof, though, so the athletes will be protected. And we're in a tent, so it's just the audience. We don't care about that. Ooh. It's going to get killed now after this competition. <laughs> All right, Max goes up onto the pinch now, makes the clip. Rosa swings those legs through, no issues from her on that initial steep section of the wall. She's approaching the end of it now. Max goes for a high heel. Good work from Max so far. He's looking comfortable. Mm -hmm. Rose at flips and then sits back down. And those holds beneath it and will chalk up once more. Do you know that pocket hold that she's in with the right hand? Isn't it 360? Is it any good, that pocket? Uh, it has a wide range, so there are a few that are good, and if you turn it in a different angle, it gets a little worse. Okay. But from this angle, it looks decent, especially on top of a cheetah. Volume to change the profile. It's kind of stacked up, isn't it? Now Max, this is where he has to fight hard here. Comes in with the left hand. Now onto the slopers and the pinches. The business end of this route starting, and a long way to go on the men's route. You haven't seen anyone getting towards the head wall yet. Oh no, that... Oh. Lost it. <laughs> That's your analysis. He fell off. Yeah, we'll see a replay in a sec. Max is down. I wonder if like, there's anything to do with such a big weather change because it was kind of hot yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they look a little more tired or they look like their feet or something is going wrong in their performances for the past few climbers, for both women and men. So I'm wondering if maybe they are tired from... From yesterday. Yeah, the yeah. thing is, Max didn't compete in Boulder, so he's just a lead specialist. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I know what you mean, but I'd be surprised if he was that tired. Maybe it, maybe it is this humidity thing we were talking about. Maybe it's yeah. just a little bit sweatier today. Because the setters would have set this last night where it was cold and crisp. Mm -hmm. Well, not set it. They've set it, obviously, way before that, but they've yeah. been forerunning it last night. So, Rose is doing very well, though. She is just approaching the head wall here, shaking out with that right heel on. And this is smart from her, because without a doubt, this is where the women's route really begins to ramp it up. It looks like if she didn't doesn't have any foot slips or hand slips, she would might make the highest point that we missed, is she? Oh, she hits the sloper. Great from her. But you can see something in the body here. Start to realize that she's got to fight now. Still stuck at another one. And it goes a crimp that we couldn't see when we were trying to. To read it, yes. Yeah. I said the feet are good, so I bet the holds are bad. And yes, it is. That's a nasty side pull block crimp there to pull through. But I'm pretty sure that's... I want to see where he fell off. I kind of glanced down and missed this. So he, he had, had a drop knee to clip, and then he let go of a drop knee, and his left hand got, got kind of like slippery. Mm. Yes, I know. We, we aren't in control of the replays, I'm afraid. <laughs> With his sloper, and this is Rosa falling down near the top, but I think pretty near the high point. And Max, let's see exactly what happened here. He crossed through. Flick of the legs. Oh, wow. Okay, next two athletes are uh, out on the stage. We've got Hubin Min and Camille Puget from France. Right, athletes underway. Camille Puget putting that right foot up, making the clips down low. And this is where it just launches into a really steep section, just straight <laughs> off the ground. Two moves in, and you are onto a 50 degree wall. Pretty savage way to start things off, isn't it? 
Hyunbin is one of also another legendary climb, lead climber mm -hmm. for Korean male athletes. He's also not tall, if I remember correctly. I've seen him in person just only a couple times. But yeah, I'll, I'll check his exact height because I'm not sure off the top of my head. I'll have a little look. And that height, do you think it would make a difference on a route like this? Do you think it's quite spanny? Well, with this route, no, because we had a hard time with whether the purple one on the left was women mm -hmm. or the yellow and the blue one on the right was men. So, we were like, which do you think is men and women? Yeah, I usually get that wrong whenever I guess. I think I got it right today. 162 centimeters, that's how tall it is. Yeah, it launches into the right hand. Yes, I'm not sure we are, by the way, getting uh, any graphics on our screen. So apologies if you're seeing leaderboards and we're not. But we'll uh, try to sort that out. So Camille is easily through this 55. Now into the angle change as she just has, sits on the hill. There we go, we've got some graphics coming through. And uh, for the men's 32 plus is the high point. Oscar Baudran doing well, first athlete out. And uh, Cuban Min looks a little pumped at the moment as he shakes out that right hand. Yeah. Oh, Camille struggling there to get the toe in. She launches that pitch. So she's into the pinky section. Ethan Min launches right as well. So he rests on that right hand, crosses into the big red holds now. Oh, catches the right as well. He's to me, that move kind of looks bordery. Does, and he's struggling, both athletes struggling, both full head and hands here. I the cracks that we might see a lot of people fall in the semi-final round today. Yeah, well, she was really having to fight through that section. Mm -hmm. Blocked footholds as well. And that was where, kind of where Futebaito, or where, was where Futebaito felt. Yeah, Human Min just didn't ever look entirely settled. He looked tired to me as well. Yeah. He looked like his body was quite far out from the wall for the most of the time. I wonder if he lost flow. Mm to start with, and he couldn't quite get back himself into the wall. Right, Mattia Pozzi is out, Mototaka Ishizi as well. Right, Mattia Pozzi is the lady who I am endlessly impressed with at the moment because she is having an epic lead season. Since Innsbruck, she's just stepped things up a notch. And every time I think she's in trouble, like in Briansson, she fell off the quali route on the low jump. She was gone out of the running. She came back. And she's just such a good climber right now and really seems to be enjoying it. She uh, was seventh in Copper, sixth in Vila, third in Briansson, sixth in Chamonix. It's just unbelievable. Really consistent climbing. For Great her. season for her. Yeah, it's a, it's a step up. And she's doesn't boulder in terms of competitions, so this is her main focus. I think for Mototaka too, it's lead is his main discipline. I've seen him on Japanese, like Japan National Qualification Round mm -hmm. for bordering, but I don't know if he, if he has participated in Japan Nationals for bordering before. Okay. Uh, Matea is through. Oh, Unleash a bit of power there. And it is starting to rain just a little bit out in the stadium. So it definitely is humid. Conditions changing here. So it goes up with the left hand, locks it off and then fires in. She's having to really power through some of these sections. Oh, attack only just gets that left hand. He's also one of the shortest 
Federer to climb in the semi-final, I believe. I've only started seeing his name a couple years. You can see that height, actually. He's really struggling to get the feet down into position. Yeah. Kind of similar to Hyunbin, who just climbed before him. Yeah. Maybe it is a bit reachy, this, and he sort of smiles down. So, Mattia Pozzi, I'm not sure. I can't work it out. She is a fighter, so I don't know if she's fighting and she's okay, or she's fighting and she's in trouble. You can't really tell from how she looks on the wall? Honestly, she just never seems to give up. <laughs> you know, she's one of them, so it doesn't matter how pumped she is, she still goes. Some athletes I really struggle to. Serato is another one. He, whenever he falls yeah. off, I'm like, oh, he fell off. I didn't see that at all. I think it's kind of similar for me with Tomoa. Mm -hmm. so Tomoa looks like he's just running onto the wall, yeah. and then he just like loses it in a second. Yeah. As I said, it's very unfair. Come on, athletes. Let us know. Matia Potsi tries to find a drop knee in underneath. It's a huge drop knee, but she is having to really struggle. She's low going up towards that white hold. Could have an early fall yeah. for her. I don't think that's going to be enough for finals for Matia, which will break a bit of a streak here for her. This is where we lost Max. Mm -hmm. oh, too. There are a lot of early falls and surprises going on in this comp, which makes it great for us as spectators, but less good for the athletes. Laser focus there, she found those feet, and she was just low. The foot did go as she went up. This was a good save for him. Yeah, he struggled to get the feet in. He wanted to kind of hook the toe underneath, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder when he fell, I don't know why he didn't choose the toe. On the right. Yeah. yeah. Lynn van de Meer is coming for the Netherlands and Philip Schenk for the men. Alright, Lynn didn't have the best round in copper. She was 26th there, so bottom of the semis. And then she did get third place at the European Championships in Vilas. And ninth in Briançon. So a bit up and down, but generally kind of top half of semis. Philip campus his way through the bottom of the route. Not too difficult for the men, even though there's no feet. I think it would be trickier to have kind of like a balancey start than just a physical strength. Yeah, a balanced start tends to sort of scare the athletes a little bit when they see it. Although you rarely see them fall off it. But sometimes it happens. Yeah, it <laughs> Everything can happen. Huh? No we need to seeing it all yet. Okay, so Lynn commits to these quite bad feet on the blue slopers. It looks for a heel underneath as she crosses through. A quick drop, quickly lying over the top of the yellow volume, which you just readjust it. Interesting, that. Sometimes you can kind of call a technical on that, which is easy to remove. Philip dropped down a little bit after making that clip. Resting on that right arm there, fingers deep in the pocket. She gets herself set for these stacked volumes, as you can see underneath. She doesn't like the look of that hole, decided to clip them down low. Look at the feet over to the left as Philip Schenk comes up into this right hand now, locks off that crimp. And we saw elbows go up here before to make a bit of space, but he's seems to be doing the opposite. Straight arms from Philip. <laughs> Lynch, big drop knee in that pocket that looks awkward on the knee. They both look decent. So far, they don't look that tired. They look like they have some power left to go through the section that we want to see further and further. 
Yeah, it was a nice wide shot to show just how long this wall is. Enormous. Fairly, is it fairly new, this facility? Uh, the lead wall, the speed wall, has been here for a while, but the bordering wall was made for just this car. And it's a different location. The World Champs is going to be somewhere else, potentially, I think. From what I understand, anyway. Um, not quite sure. You probably know better than that. Yeah, I think someone mentioned that it's, we're not in a waterfall arena that we saw last year, which was up in the mountains around so This is more central here. Mm -hmm. But yes, I don't think it's going to be the, uh, the location for the World Champs. Might change. Who knows? No one's going to tell me if it does. Hopefully, oh, it's about to reach the high point. He gets the next holder, then he'll be placed. Oh, just the it for a second. What Ugh. do you think? Would that be a plus? Or he secured his score. I think it should be a plus for me. Yeah, that's why I thought it. Well, I think it should be a high point for him. And Lin has recognised that this is a tri tricky sequence here. And she's resting before committing to this next move. And seems to have found a good place to rest as well. She's now looking right. You can see the score on the right. 35 plus is the women's high point. Lin is on 28. the slope so this is going to move her up she's approaching the tier pots she'll push her further down with that one we're looking for eight athletes to move through but it's very early days in the semi-final so that leaderboard there gives you an idea of where they're getting to but don't pay too much attention to it yet. Lynn on the foothold which is a handhold and falls on the sloper yeah you can tell I wonder what went wrong well, this was Philip down low who looked very confident. He's a strong athlete, very good boulderer, and he dealt with the bottom of the route well. Look at the shaky elbow on oh. the left. I don't know how he managed to do like three more moves after that. That is impressive. You're yeah, right, and look at this. Oh. Three fingers dragging on the hold. Oh, no, I want to see the top of Lin's route. Because she rested here so well, recovered. Mm. Had it pretty good, you know. I think your method is better than the printed sign. Homemade. Yoshiyuki Yata launches, and we will expect this man just to never really stop. He, do, he doesn't really do resting. Another person to watch, because you might miss him falling. Yeah. And Mikaela Smetanova, great to see her in a semi-final. The Czech team with those uh, really distinctive hair ties that they've worn throughout the season, which is, I think, a new thing for their uniform. Uniform? Is it a uniform? You know is it a uniform, or are they just started to... It's part of the team kit. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Mm. Japanese team were just talking about some teams don't really have, like, the pants. They can wear whatever they want. Because mm -hmm. Japan team has, like, a t-shirt and pants, leggings, like, yeah. all printed with the North Face, but some other countries only have their uniforms on top, okay. but they can wear anything they want on the bottom. We saw an amazing set of leggings in a women's speed competition. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was really cool. Tomorrow I heard that one. It was like lots of faces mm -hmm. and a stripy pair of colourful leggings. It was brilliant. Absolutely loved it. Now, Michaela, 27 was her last comp, but that was bolder in terms of lead. She was 34th in Hopper, just outside of the finals in Vilas as well. Yoshiyuki's struggling a bit with that clip, but he gets it in now. And he's so quickly got to this red hole. I know. I don't know if it's been a minute yet. I bet it is, but... Yeah. Powered through here. Yoshiyuki didn't have the greatest time in bordering, so I'm hoping he can get as high as he could and lead for the Seoul World Cup. Awesome if he made a final, wouldn't it? Maybe that's the key. Get through faster. Seems to be the way. He's certainly doing like well. Like, don't stop moving. Oh, the kind of campuses. I'm not sure that was the best method. But she's making it work. So far, I wonder if she's just cost herself a bit. Yoshiyuki hits the high point. If away, it will now. But look at this from Yoshiyuki. This is brilliant. Now, we were wondering about this move, and he's only just got that. 
think he might have had to do the foot before going up for the hand. And I think he needed to clip before going up. Yeah. But still, that's a high point. It is. And now he can breathe for the first time in a couple of minutes. Oh, brilliant. And Michaela as well. She's in a bit of trouble here as she crosses through. Ignoring the clip at the moment, which will get the right heel in first. She's down in 10th. Rosa Reca with 35 plus. Hopefully we'll see the men's score as well. I haven't seen that in a while. We've only seen the women's. It's the foot in and raise that left hand. Oh. Uh, she misses that side foot. I think she was in trouble from that campus move she did. Let's have another look at Yoshiyuki. But so fast we've missed half of it. <laughs> it's just... The bottom, who knows? The top was very impressive, though. Struggled yeah. a bit with this clip, but this section. He was so fast going through this section. Yeah. Just full commitment to every move as well. It was like, no hesitation. Cracked it in. And then this was, yeah, no clip, no feet. And he was just too stretched out. Yeah, but which hole do you think they're going to clip from? No idea. <laughs> no, no idea. Well, I'm going to try to guess. That was Michaela coming down with the right hand. Yoshiki is in top with 36, and then Philip Schenk 33. Shingun Young 32 plus, and down in eighth is Giorgio Tomatis. Just tell you that because he's in the men's school for a while. Now, Tomoe Takao, tell me a little bit about her if you know her. I don't really, to be honest. She has started to be on the scene like quite recently. And it might be her first senior season on the World Cup circuit. But yes. she's been winning the lead, like, Youth Japan Nationals. She's been on podium for quite a few times. So I've seen her names, but haven't really talked to her in person. Yeah, she won the FISU, which is impressive. But she's just 20. And I think she's one of those who is not struggling to break onto the Japanese team, but sort of... You know, it's hard, let's be honest. And I was talking to a coach about this the other day, and especially with the quota change next year. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult if you are, because there's so many good Japanese athletes all vying for places. Philip Martin. I was watching this man climb in a qualification on the route on the left. And again, it was another power screen, where just every move was like, he's got to fall off it. Nope, he's still on. Yeah, I think I remember listening to that. Mm couldn't tell where it was coming from because there were four people climbing at the time, but... He was giving a, a, a very vocal climb. He rotates through the crimps. Alba's going up a bit, but I think he's okay here. Locking off that left arm. Timona. Timona is also one of the shorter climbers, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't have a height on record, actually. But you can see with that big flick that she, yeah, struggling a bit. And height's a funny one. I mean, we talk about height all the time in climbing. We don't mean it's an advantage or disadvantage, but it does change certain sections. And you can see here she is struggling to get the feet engaged. But I would say in terms of discipline, lead is more, like, accepted for shorter climbers. I have a Japanese friend who's like 148 who's been in the World Cup circuit before. Yeah. The thing is, generally climbers are quite short. You know, there aren't yeah. that many very tall people in this sport. Maybe Paul? Yeah, Paul is, is an outsider. Adam Ondra, obviously. But, you know, everyone is kind of you know, around about my height and I consider myself fairly short. How tall are you? Um, in centimetres? I can't tell you. In old money, I'm five foot eight. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to Google is... that. 5A is like 173 yeah, about that. <laughs> one, 172. Oh, I got it quite. That's pretty good. All right, Timona, though, has got through regardless. She's hitting these side pulls now. Kivian Kwon comes on, which is an interesting one, because they've been bringing the athletes on together, and now they've sort of changed up the system a little bit. Who knows what's going on? But it will move things through nicely, whatever happens. Simona is at this section here, which she will be able to rest on, shaking out those arms, and she's got to. And with her height, there are some big moves to come through the overhang. From the pocket to the slope. Yeah. yeah. 
So hopefully she'll be able to get that. She's going to have to put a lot of energy into the jump, whatever. This move also kind of looks far, and the camera changed, so... Yeah. Well, pans up to catch her there, which leaves... She is onto the pocket. No, she's the one before pocket. Yeah, there we go. Split screen back in action. So yeah, pocket, intermediate foot thing to come, and a big move to a sloper. Seems like there's like a two rest points back to back here, and then this probably would be the last one before the top. I think the top of the women's route is really difficult. From my reading of it, so. But you told me you gave up on reading. Wow, well, I might have been a bit self deprecating <laughs> on that one. I think I. Oh, that was well done. And I think the advantage of that fight is she can bring the foot up earlier. So actually, it might have helped her a bit. But she hits the slap and she's low on that one. Yeah, she managed to bring the foot up onto the white hold quite early on. Mm -hmm. she went back up, but that would be at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, I think for being short, like you have an advantage, especially in lead, because heel hook is a lot easier and getting your, your position like squeezed up is a lot easier. And like you drop me, they can fit in a little bit better. And relatively, they might be lighter in terms of the weight as well. So mm. they can kind of carry a lighter weight when it comes to like weight to power ratio. Interesting, okay. And there's so much to analyze with this sport. It's great for us. Quant matches the sloper, which won't be feeling that nice in these conditions right now. There is the men's leaderboard. Good to see that. So Yoshiki Gata, 36, way out in front after that speed run. <laughs> Philip Sheik. <laughs> and then down in eighth is Giorgio Tomatis. Lots of good climbers to come. Shion Omata will be out last. He was the only one to top one of the competition route yesterday. And well, I'll talk about him later. That's a clever left foot. Look, he's got it cammed in. Oh. Oh, it's going to hurt the knee, isn't it, though? But how is he going to pop? Oh, there he is. That was really good climbing from Kwon there. <laughs> <laughs> and the Korean crowd get right behind him. But this is a hard move. You can see him trying to hold that right leg, and it just about, but he hasn't made the clip, and I don't think he can, you know. No, he's going to go. <laughs> he's happy. He's happy. A oh, good fight from him. It was a good save for his toe hook. It was a good performance for the audience as well. Yeah, it was fun, wasn't it? And they needed a bit of a bit quite quiet, the audience, but that certainly fired them up a little bit. Now, Sarah Chopper. She's the youth world champ. And she's definitely coming for the uh, for the senior circuit. She topped a route yesterday. Moving these pockets. It's interesting, the first few athletes kind of struggled in this section, but mm -hmm. everyone else recently has looked fine on it. But they have still been doing the different method, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, Camilla the only one with the fig four so far that I've seen. That is true. Was she the first one out? Yeah, she was the first one and out and the only one to do the figure four. Yeah. Yeah, the athletes do observe these routes. They get six minutes to look at it. We didn't get it on our broadcast, but they have an idea of what they're facing here. Sometimes and it's interesting to see, or maybe they talked together about the beta because they do the exact same move. Mm -hmm. And even in the same country team, some people have a different method. And I wonder if it's like something they talked about, but they changed on spot as they were climbing it. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because we do sometimes see that within teams, that they do something within the teams different. I always wonder. I'm waiting for the days where they start to trick each other, but hopefully that won't happen. Because it is climbers against the wall, you know, that's the ethos of the sport. So they do try to help each other as much as possible. Right, Sarah. 
very careful with the feet through this section, just slowing herself down. It's a long route, this. We did see a few people timed out. I know Annie Sanders got timed out. She topped the route, but yeah. wasn't allowed. I heard it from some of mm. So I got here after she topped. So it scored a few spots lower from the top. That is Mejdi Shalk. He's more consistent in the semi-final for a lead as well now. Yeah, I mean, he's that, you know, he's very much brought up into the combined Olympic sort of mm -hmm. side of things. So I think right from the start of his career, he's done both. But he did miss out on the Olympics. But yeah, 21st in copper, 10th in Prague for Boulder, and 7th the other day for Boulder. So missed out on the finals just. He'll want some revenge here. It was just a one attempt to resolve, if I remember correctly. Yes, you're right. Yeah. So tight in that round. <laughs> that was hard to watch. Sarah seemed to be struggling a little bit in this section. This is a similar move actually we have for men as well. With like really squeeze up Gaston with high foot. I wonder if taller people might have a heart attack? Uh, maybe. In a smaller box? Yeah, well, Sarah takes a deep breath. I think that's going to leave her outside of the finals, though. Oh, Mejdi had a bit of a hand slip there as he came out underneath. The rain has gone away, which is good. Yeah, very overcast day here in our arena. Right, he gets a heal in now. over his leg to make this clip, hits the slopers, and I'll make these little foot adjustments. He's not looking that comfortable, I don't think, right now. Not really. Now he finds a bit of flow as he launches over to the right. But yeah, I think he's looking a bit tired. He's one of the ones who's done multiple events over the last week. He's also one of the person who had the longest season. Yeah, in the OQS. Yeah. He, he's, a, he's one who had to fight his teammates. You know, that was that really emotional final competition in Budapest. Okay, May Kataki. And I really like May, mainly because she's such a good outdoor boulder as well. Like, she went to Magic Wood after one of the rounds, yeah. like, set a new baseline, which is an 8B. Plus. She could do it all. Oh, Medley fighting. Yeah, May speaks really good English as well, so I've sort of managed to have a few chats with her. It's, yeah, really, really cool. Mejdi, you know, a bit of trouble as that left elbow goes up, and now he kicks the right. No, he missed the toe. Just sort of didn't get it in very well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a bittersweet face. Mm. Have you set or climbed with May before? I don't think I've done either. But let me tell you, some people think that's me, but that's not <laughs> me. We have different last names, but we have similar face shape. And right. we, have, we are actually same height. She's 153, I'm 153. But she's much stronger than me. May I tell you, no one's ever seen you in the same room together. I mean... You don't have to, I can tell. Maybe it's you speaking whilst you climb, which is super impressive, to be honest. Now, this is a different bay from the one about commentary box. But yeah, you're right. She's your kind of height or a bit smaller? She's the exact same for me. I don't know about her aping mm -hmm. like her arm span. But she is originally from the most northern part of Japan and now based in Shiga, which is like near Osaka. And they have a lot of outdoor climbing and a really good lead facility. And I think she mainly trained there. Yeah, but it's interesting to me that she went to Magic Wood because, you know, that's a boulder place. So she's obviously a really good boulder as well. She has achieved a lot of like really hard border lines in Japan that like she was the first female to oh, do wow. so.
it's just not recognized as well as like her lead achievement. Yeah. For me, mate, you're winning on that one. Not you made that, <laughs> that, that, that one. So that quick draw around about her face, a bit awkward here as she crosses through. Yeah, those quick draws are from Trango, which is the IFSC's new sponsor this year. I'm particularly excited by that because I want to get my hands on their gear because some of this stuff is so cool. They've got these ultra-light quick draws, lots of recycled material. And we have an interview today from World Climbing Club, so you can check out them. Now, just down on the bottom left of your screen, we've got Zento Murashita, who's been... Oh, no, it's not. I'm sorry. We've got a cleaning break. That's a couple of He's an amazing outdoor climber and setter. So we're just going to stick with May. So this is the last climber before that break. Fun fact, she's the nutritionist. May is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we were joking the other day because the May in my commentary box was saying that she was... What, what did you feed me hope before? <laughs> Ah, like a beef bone soup? There we go. <laughs> so we were saying the May is the new Japanese uh, nutritionist. But the other May actually is. Oh. And then she recently posted about like how, you know, eating properly is such an important thing for an athlete mm. to do. Because that has been a big problem over the years yes. in the climbing scene. Rosa Rekka, 35 plus, leading the way from May Kataki, who was the last athlete we saw. Only eight athletes can make it through. But some big names to come, as you can see, including Jain Kim. We near the end. Well, Erin Monique, she was in the Boulder finals the other day. I'm Mori. Halfway through, and some big names to come as we get set for our second bit of the semi final. That's the current leaderboard. Uh, well, we're halfway through, so 13 more to come here. And then down at the end, Shion Mata, Sam Avazu, and Serato and Raku in our top. And he just crushed it. And then I think a lot of people like like his climbing style here. Yes, I mean it's it's similar, especially in Korea. Mm -hmm. It's it's exactly his style, all the routes. Yeah, I think he's also like were super famous for like a dual texture, jumpy, like a turnaround, like some sort of coordination move. And it was really fascinating, I bet, for a lot of Korean climbers. Interesting. Because he's very, very popular. Mm. Like the queue for his autograph is massive. Yeah. And Tomoa, too. Tomoa has... He literally had two queues going out to both sides. <laughs> what is that? Both hands signing autographs. He's going one, another, one, another for like 30 minutes. Amazing. Okay, second half of our semi-final is now underway. Zinto Marashita on the left and Helene Jenico on the right. Helene from France, lead specialist. Zinto is also known for a lead in Japan, but he's also one of the few athletes that I haven't really talked to in person. Okay. You're meant to be our spy here, mate. What are you doing? You need, you need to get in there. I know. I know. There's just there's been so many youth climbers that's come out as the first year of like a senior circuit, and I'm trying to catch up. But there are so many. <laughs> yes, every time I, I seem to come to an IFC comp, there's more young, strong Japanese climbers. Now, Helen was fifth in Vilas, so finals for her in the European champs. She's outside though of the top eight in Copper, down in 16th, but such a regular in semi-finals. And Zento was actually 10th in copper mm. as well. So Zento, nice and smooth at the moment. No drama from him, sort of cruising through this section. And Helen as well, up towards the big three stacked block crimp thing. Why, as a root setter, why are there three holds stacked up? Well, I get the first one. Mm -hmm. Why is the third one there? The third one, like on the top? Mm because they were trying to block the jug that's like by the edge of where the angle changed. Mm -hmm. And the blocking hold was going over the angle change. So they had to add another one to block the blocker. I see, so you don't stand on the blocker. Yeah. Okay, I get you. So they blocked the coping and then they had to block the blocker, block it. Yeah, that one with you. And I think blocking the holes has got easier as the dual texture hold was invented because blocking hold were often kind of like broken with other betas by stepping on top of the blocker. Yeah. But nowadays, 
because the blocker is also a dual attack, they can't really do anything with it. As a good as other hand or as like to create other like break beta. Yeah, I'm with you. It's, it, yeah, it's like a tool, isn't it? It's fascinating. Okay, well, both athletes doing well at the moment. Helen, if she can find it. Oh, that was very close to losing it. She drags the rope through. There is an opportunity to shake here, but she hasn't really found the resting position. Maybe she's waiting for the next hole to like properly rest. And Zento, on the other hand, got the clips in. Yeah, there's no issues. I have barely looked on the left-hand side of the screen because he's just, you know, doing fine. I just missed out by Brian, so he got first. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, good point. Yeah, so he's quite good. <laughs> he, oh, he misses the side pull then. But that's going to be right up towards the high point, I think. Yoshiyuki's still got a high point yeah, because he, he held, held it. it. Yeah. Second place. That could be good. And Helen, yeah, you're right. Look, she has recovered here instead of down low. Well, not recovered, but rested anyway. Shaken, shaken out. Now, this is where May got her right foot up. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think Helen, she's a bit taller. I'm not sure she can in the same way, but she does the left foot instead. She moves into provisional finals at the moment, but arm is coming up. Oh, move is a stopper, eh? Paul Jem is out onto the mats. Second French athletes climb for the men. No, third, actually, sorry. Max and Medjdi. As well as I know. Yes. Like, Let's just go on with it. the Insta story. It sounds like a break. Well, yeah, if it's on Insta stories, it's fine. So I was a little bit impressed by Paul just reaching up to a hole that everyone was jumping <laughs> well, not towards. Campus, so yeah, yeah. He is ridiculously tall. He's, what, 186, I think? I thought he was 190. Yeah, maybe. But I know there's a bit of discrepancy with how tall he is. I think he's actually taller than it says on the stats. So hang on, hang on a sec. Bear with me. I'm finding it. I'm finding it. 198. Jeez. 198? And now the reaction. Oh, the legend. Reaction for Jane Kim. Yeah, she comes on. Look, explain Jane Kim's reaction. I mean, why is she such a legend? She has been in the competition scene for such a long time, and despite like her height, because she's also the same height as me, mm -hmm. 153 or 152 even, and with so many achievements she's done, and like pretty much the only one who's been on the like lead scene and consistently in finals with such a slow, flowy maybe too slow nowadays mm -hmm. but very paced and she never looks like she's aged yes. either she's had a kid she has a very cute daughter and she looks in the better shape every day it's anime. and as she started climbing by the way there was people on the boulder wall on our left looking at it the everyone who was looking at the road wall ran across our arena here towards the lead wall she's got that kind of a support but you write about the slowness, and this is a long wall. We've seen athletes time out, so Jeanne is going to have to keep an eye on the time. Paul Jeff, meanwhile, no drama down low. He's up to the Gastons now. This would be one of the sections that I would be a little bit worried about because it's quite scrunchy mm -hmm. and for how tall he is, but he's also very flexible. Yeah, I think you, I mean you'd have to be, wouldn't you? Because you're right about the height. Sometimes yeah. it has the advantage, and sometimes it doesn't. Flexibility is your way out of it. I'm getting lots of support. We saw the the banners. It's kind of interesting to see one of the tallest athletes in this lead World Cup, and one of the shortest athletes climbing yeah. on the same one at the same time. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> Hits that left hand. Bit of an adjustment. She's going to have to do a big move. She could be in some trouble here if she comes up. No, okay, she's all right. I still remember back in the day when they were allowed to have a watch mm -hmm. on the wrist. Jane Kim always had a watch and she was always checking it like <laughs> a second half like, way up on the wall. Oh, Paul stretches, but he's so stretched out. And that's going to be around about Yoshiyuki's high point, and he's very happy with that one. Those are such like, great climbing for Paul. 
He does look a little tired there. He does. I think I love it when an athlete celebrates like that because you're like, you know what? They did as best as they could do. You know, there was no mistakes for them. But Zhang Kim is still going here. She looks so controlled. Yeah, if I could wake up and be reborn a climber, I think Zhang Kim would be the one I'm reborn as. You know, I would love to climb like her. Yeah, I wonder what it is like to have an endurance like she does. Yeah, she just calms me down <laughs> when I watch her. I sort of go into a zen state. And look at that, just a lovely flow over to the left and then comes up to that right. There's no sort of extraneous movements that she makes. Okay, Yuta. Oh, I can't pronounce her second name. Imaizumi. Thank you. That's a very Japanese last name. How would you pronounce it in English? Uh, Imazumi, that's how I'd say. Is that wrong? You're just laughing at this. Oh, no, Jang Kim falls! That was such an unexpected fall. Oh, you don't often see her look that disappointed. And she's so, she's devastated out there. Wow, well, a bit of drama in the second half of our comp here. Zhang Kim with an early slip. I don't know if that height was enough for the final. I don't think it is, no. It was around where, like, the first cracks we were talking about. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's heartbreaking. There are more Korean athletes to come for the crowd. Yuta is also specialized in lead. And he's been on and off of the World Cup circuit, but he loves outdoor climbing for border. I've done a little bit of outdoor climbing in Japan, and it's pretty good from what mm -hmm. I've seen, but it's still developing, isn't it? There's, there's more to do. Yeah, he is one of the developers, actually. Oh, cool. Well, that's a... Like, he cleans the border, and he climbs the border, and he posts about it. Yeah, there is a lot of rock in Japan, but it wasn't done that much until kind of quite recently, and then there's more and more stuff coming through. Yep. Right, Zhilulo is on the stage from China. She, if I'm not wrong, and I might be wrong, I'm pretty sure she was training in Japan for quite a long time. She, she comes and goes, like, quite often. Like every time she would probably stay around a month mm -hmm. and it would go back to China for a month ish and then she would come back like for Olympics and before Olympics as well. Yeah, so she's got that style. Yeah. It always brings in like such a big climbing group. Hmm. Has like maybe three or four players oh, really? along the way. Like an entourage. Yeah, it's like they actually use a micro bass to come to a gym. Really? What her yeah. team? Like a group of 12 to 15 comes at the same time. Oh, wow. And they had a month pass so that they can come almost every day to train. That's a brilliant bit of that. I love that. I want to be there on tour. I think he's struggling here a little bit. Yuta comes up, but this is approaching a high point. He's into the provisional finals. Oscar Paul Drown in the danger spots. I think he's going to be pushed out. And Paul Jemt leading the way due to count back on that 36. That's high point as well, so that will be the new high point because of countback, I'm pretty yes. sure. And he's happy with it as well. His mum, his mum's here with Aymar's mum watching oh. and climbing today. They went on a bakery tour. <laughs> I haven't done the bakery thing, I'm clearly missing out. The Korean bakery has been really famous for Japanese people. Okay, what do you guys do in France? You must, it must be heaven. Well, I am not into it <laughs> either, so I just like follow where they go <laughs> with them. So, hang on, what, what is I Mori's favorite bakery item? Um, we went to a bagel store, and it, I heard she went to the one called like Xiopang, okay, which is like salted butter bread, okay, like melted butter inside like a butter roll thing wow. and that has been big in Japan and Korea okay. this is amazing I love this knowledge right Jilulo is halfway through ish on her route so Tony Yoshida is out 
another specialist in lead. He's been on podium several times on the World Cup circuit. Oh, Gilu has a big slip as well, though. That right foot is a nasty one. But she managed to get through it. She She's did. Also, another very calm and like quiet, but very stubborn climber. Mm. Yeah, I love it when you describe climbers as stubborn. <laughs> Most climbers are stubborn, I think. Yeah. And the chalk bag she has is the Japanese brand from like southern part of Japan, owned by a climber, <laughs> like a former competitor. Okay. It's a big old chalk bag, isn't it? It's a very nice size chalk bag for like a competitor because you can have your whole hand in it and also a chalk ball with some loose chalk inside as well. Oh, she clips down low. This is the women's high crux for sure, just getting onto the head wall here. She seems like she has some juice left in her tank. Yeah, she's got the right foot in, boost up with the right, it's his left hole that spat off a few people. Now she's struggling, a bit low foot adjustment. This is going to be burning some energy. No, she's not going to get it. That was kind of like a body position I was talking about. Having your left foot just out right and then flagging at your right foot. But right hand obviously isn't really that good. No, it must be bad, eh? It looked a lot better from the ground when we were reading it, that right hand. To me, anyway. <laughs> Did you know it was rubbish? Uh, no, well, that's the blue pill. And then blue pill hold usually has like kind of different texture from other fiberglass holes yeah, like so flat so hold or cheetah hold. And if you're used to grabbing onto those brands, then you might have a harder time finding your right position. Ah, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So you think maybe the athletes are just thinking it could be a little bit. I mean, they know the holes though, don't they? They do. They should be used to climbing it, but it depends on which team you climb and what kind of holes they have. Yeah, that's true. It would be a different story. Okay, well, regardless of if they know it or not, they're all falling off it. No one getting through that sequence yet. Now, the I think one person got through with got the left hand. The left hand. Mm. So Tony got right. here pretty quickly. Yeah, he did. On to the pinches then. That heel toe cam. Oh, look at that. He's double stacked. His toes there for a second. Yeah. That was smart. That was a secure transfer from that weird heel toe cam or toe toe cam. Yeah, toe toe cam. Shaking out, I can't believe he's resting it. Toe hook is good though, but releasing it is powerful. Barn door off, Mia Crample is about to get underway for her route. That's the move I meant. He's done it well, though. So some people were talking about how good he is with his static style, how like close he can stay on the wall, and I think this is one of his style. Oh, that was. Oh. Ooh. I think that was a smart choice of him, and we can't really see it from the camera angle, but the whole thing that people have been falling off has been blocked with a couple holds. Now, I talked to Mia yesterday during qualifying, asked her how she was, and she just said, I'm physically tired from competing, and I'm tired, tired from jet lag. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's, and I think there's a lot of athletes who are feeling the same. But she still made a semi-final, she'll still fight hard for this. She was here earlier, like for the Bordering World Cup, to also celebrate Gregor's last World Cup. Yes, Greg Ovazonic retiring. We had this wonderful feature in the climbing club where, because uh, Yanya came, one of the reasons Yanya was here was to support him. And she was in tears, Gregor was in tears, I was normally in tears just because everyone else was in tears. It was just a beautiful, beautiful moment. And shout out to Gregor because what a legend. Yeah. And he put this post up saying, look, I'm not a legend you know i haven't i'm not a once in a generation climber and it's kind of like yeah but it's not about that you know it's about who you are yeah and it, it's about like what kind of impression he left in the climbing stage and he was such a good person to always watch yeah like he's one of oh, so those energetic person in the field all the time and i always enjoyed watching him i agree but his teammate mia crample makes the transition from steepness and the rain is falling much heavier now although 
the humidity's kind of gone away a bit. It's colder, so maybe, and the, the root's very well protected. Sasha Lehman cuts loose. Makes the match on the slope. But near Crample is nearing the danger point here. We've seen a few athletes slip. Do you think that slip has to do anything with the rain that we are suffering from? Yeah, it's hard to tell, isn't it? I think it's a bad foot. Yeah. I think there's not much friction on it, um, which doesn't help. And I think almost the athletes uh, don't give it enough respect, perhaps. You know, it, it feels like a move you can just move through, and you can see Mia just not really thinking about it. And I, th I think if you've just been caught out by that. Sasha hits the left hand. He's a little bit shorter than the others and needs to pop a little bit more into these holds. He's won 6 4. That gold medal, though, he won in the Vilas European Championships meant a lot to him. He was delighted by that one. In front of his home crowd, gold medal. How wonderful is that? So, Mia is about to hit the crux now. Left hand buried deep in the pocket. Right hand will be on that intermediate foothold. She's got to sort the foot out. She needs to do what May was talking about. She doesn't seem like she missed it. No, hardly at all. She shakes her head too. Not quite happy with her own performance. We're seeing a bit of a trend in this semi-final route. Two cruxes are shutting down the athletes here. I have a feeling, I might be super wrong, I don't really want to say it before he finishes <laughs> climbing, uh -huh. but this looks like it's kind of a climb for okay. me. You could say that. With yes, powerful it's powerful body positioning and lots of foot sequences and lots of fighting hard at the right time. Mm. He's pretty good at reading routes, is Sasha. And he's a really good fighter. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's one of those stubborn ones. But he could be in trouble here. He holds the rotation, hasn't made the clip yet. Can he? Elbows are going up, but he holds that crimp well and then crosses in. That was a good save from him. But we see anyone even do a pass on this. Foot slips before he can try. And that leaves him in sick. Okay, Laura Rogera comes on from Italy. Highest. She was sick in the border around what's happening, but she soon beat it. So a lot of Japanese friends were really worried about her, but she seemed to have climbed well. Double clips, you can see how steep that angle is. Another Japanese climber up for men. His name should be Shuta Tanaka. Shuta Tanaka. And there we go. Have you got any uh, insights on Shuta? Uh, from really way back when I went to the World Youth Championship in Moscow. I think he not purposely stepped on like one of those bolts mm -hmm. before they were blocked that was yeah. back back in the day yeah and then usually athletes like even if they like feel like they have touched it they don't look down mm -hmm. so that judges don't catch them yep. but he looked down two judges <laughs> and they were like <laughs> you're done mate and then he was out of the final <laughs> Um, I think he made a high point on his performance, so we were trying to... He wasn't really using it from the video, but it was still hard to tell, so... Yeah, it's one of those things, it's kind of like, it doesn't really matter if you use if you touch it, it's done. But they're now mostly blocked. We very rarely have mm -hmm. incidences now, especially at this wall, actually. Every single one is blocked, so it's good to see. He's, he's also been on and off for the competition scene in Japan. But every time he comes back, he always makes finals in mm. Japan Nationals. Is that because he's not being selected, do you think? Or is it just that he's taking time away? Uh, it might be some of the life change from like the transferring high school to university mm -hmm. because he's now a university student or maybe graduated by now. But the school schedule isn't like, you know, being a competitor isn't always easy to get the right training cycle. 
Yeah, I know I Mori had to sort of figure that one out mm -hmm. for a while. So Laura gets a big drop knee in here, doing it the Laura way. She will find her own beater through some sections. Doesn't love a, a jumpy move. And actually, there aren't that many sort of really dynamic moves in this route. Oh, look at this. He's got a heel in up high. Yeah, I'm not convinced by that heel, you know. Just because I don't think it necessarily saves you any energy doing it, because it's such a bad hold two heel hook. So both athletes, same level now, about halfway through. Lara approaching the nervy bit of the route. And this is where we've been losing a lot of people, so I'm a little bit worried about it, but she looks pure for now. Yeah, so far so good. And she's to resting quite a while down there. Now he comes up into these Gastons. You hear the Gumbrays from the Japanese team encouraging them on. So Laura looks okay on the feet at the moment. And she to Tanaka as well. Very solid through this. Mm -hmm. Although now suddenly so Lee starts to fight as that right leg kicks. Laura as well picks up the pace a little bit now. Shooter crosses through, looks left, hits the sloper. You That's can see the blocker we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he falls on it. That happened quickly. Oh, shake of his head as he comes down as well. He didn't like that. Yeah, I'm not sure if that would be enough for finals for him. Lara approaches the crux now. She'll make the clip first of all, and she will be able to get her feet up high if she wants to. That's the scoreboard. She's in ninth and needs to go higher. Eyes it up. It's got to be a big pop for her. She hits it, but pops the left hand. And she's in some trouble as she swaps feet. Brings the right in, and no, the left hand was not comfortable. Up into seventh, 34. Now Doka Lee comes out. This man won a gold medal the other day in Boulder. Now he's also known for amazing bordering. Mm -hmm. He's got it all, hasn't he? I hate him to be. As I say that, he fumbles the clip, <laughs> but it's in now. Dokan, yeah, double kind of misses on those clips. So maybe he's feeling a little bit of the nerves down low. Jan Kim and Daughter are in front of us in the commentary box right now. Jan Kim's daughter is so cool, by the way. I just, she's dancing around. I know this has nothing to do with climbing, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm literally watching that, not the climbing. Okay, back to the Come on, focus. Dokan on crimps. Yeah, Dokan seems a little nervous. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's a little cold out there now. Because for elite climbers, they usually have to wait for their turn for like from two people ahead of them mm. on a seat. Yeah, so he, yeah, he might be just a little bit, have to warm himself back into the route. But he's not looking, oh, the movements are just not there yet. Maybe he's one of those people who catch up later on. Like, catch up on their pace later on. Yeah, when he's warmed up into it, maybe. We'll have to see. Zelia Avazumi while he's climbing the French. Both of the medalists from the World Cup, the Border and World Cup. Ago. Yeah, the women's podium full of first-time medalists. It's great to see Annie Sanders taking her first gold in that competition. Zelia bumps up towards the crimp. Clipped by a hip as she gets it in. Put the rope in a bit of an awkward position there, but managed to sort it out. Doja Lee still looking a little bit. It's like he's cold almost. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like to me. But he's also one of the person for me that I can't tell whether he's like tired or not. Mm. Whether he's going to do it or not. Seems to be completely recovered from that shoulder injury he had. And Zelia sped her way up. So about a third of the way through. She's through the overhang now, kicks the beat out left, brings the right hand under, 
crosses through white section to come. Or white and yellows. Dohyeon with interesting feet there as well. Now he looks kind of solid. Yeah, it's like he's back a bit, isn't it? And maybe he just needed some harder moves to wake him up a bit. Maybe he wasn't hard enough for him. Yeah. I mean, you do actually hear that from some athletes, you know, that they just couldn't get into it because they're not fighting. That's our leaderboard. He's in 11, 32. Everyone ran about the 35s to 36s in our top eight, apart from Kwon, who I think is about to be pushed out. That was so solid. And he's standing on a bolt hole. Now, he can do that, but there's no friction on it at all. More, he's not standing on it. He's kind of flagging into it, perhaps. Oh, he's dropping down. It's like at the advantage of the local. We've just lost Celia Abazu as well, by the way. That was an early fall from Celia. Well, we'll stick with Dokian Lee as he hits around the corner. He's looking calm. There is Celia on the ground way sooner than I would have expected. This it could be high point time. I think he might get a plus for that. Yeah, I think so too. Well, he certainly found, we were very worried about him down low, but he proved us, maybe just warmed himself into that route, and he's got the current high point confirmation of it. Jean Kim's daughter is now kicking a balloon. I am just, just, <laughs> she's so cool. Jean Kim playing football with her daughter. Wonderful. Well, the crowd have got some umbrellas out, as you can see, because the rain is falling here in South Korea in Seoul. eased off a little bit but it's still pretty wet out there some party a bit of dancing going on now this is a lady that you know pretty well that's Suki Tani coming onto the stage I thought I did but we talked about like we talked to each other yesterday and we don't know when was the last time we met each other because we've seen on this, like each other on Instagram quite often so we don't feel like it's been a while, <laughs> but I, I'm sure it's been like maybe five years at the very least. Oh wow! Sorry, time. I thought you were really close to each other. No, she lives in Kansai region, which is like a few hours away okay. from Tokyo. Well, she was very relaxed on stage yesterday. Like the second she came down from her quality room, she was talking to her teammates. You know, she was really vocal and seemed to be having a good time. She was the bakery tour partner ah, yesterday. Okay. Can you reveal that Suki Tanis bakery item of choice? Was it bagels too? Yeah. We only went to the bakery shop. And the Filling of the bagel? I don't remember what she got. Did no one go for the classic cream cheese and salmon? No, we went for just like a plain bagel with like something inside, but I don't know what she got. I was too focused on myself. <laughs> and <laughs> what was your bagel of choice? Blueberry. Ooh, hang on, wait, blue? Is it salty bagel or like so it was a sweet bagel? Uh, for me, I like sweet bagels, not the savoury ones. I didn't even know there was a sweet bagel. This is blowing my mind. I thought it was a savoury snack. No. Oh my goodness. Right, I need Bagel's to get like in. a dessert for us. Wow, okay. Sorry, right, climbing man. Climbing Al Yakuza swinging around. And that's Suki Tani also yes. underway. I would say I know Al a little bit more than Natsuki mm -hmm. in terms of like seeing him in person because he used to climb at the gym. Like he, he climbs regularly at the gym I used to work at. Okay. What kind of style does he have? Very slow and steady. Not that dynamic, and he's not the tallest athlete in the team either. But he, like his footwork, is what I think amazes me the most. Oh, and that's Suki Tani. Sorry, as we were talking, only just got that left hand. Barely. Yeah, barely. I, I missed that. I was focusing on. Um, yeah, she was in real trouble there. She managed to pull it back, but she was just. I think she just misjudged the move. Mm. I think shorter people have been trying to like get their heel hook right below the pocket. Now she's struggling to get. Yeah, it's unsettled her a little bit. That I think did the drop knee a bit like Laura did. For a couple of times, she's been missing the clips 
and had been kicking herself out of yeah. the final spot. Yeah, we saw it in, um, oh my goodness, but in Copper, I think. Yeah, and I think on Instagram, she's always said that she has too much fun <laughs> in climbing, that she's so focused that she misses it <laughs> and it keeps on going. Let's hope there's no incidences this time. She's up into a dangerous place here. We've seen a few falls, Ilya Abazu, and she slips too. Wow. It's, they, they, it's when they stand on the volume. Like she, she had a foot on the volume there. Oh, so sad from that Suki Tani. Emotions coming out on the stage. Now Yurikuza, meanwhile, he'll carry on climbing. It was probably because she felt like she was in a good shape and was ready to fight for much higher than where she fell. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I mean, when you see emotion, like, we don't want to see pain on stage, but emotion is, you know, it's part of this sport and it's part yeah. of any sport, you know. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything wrong with being disappointed and, you know, it's, you want to win. If you don't want to win, why would you be an athlete? And so, yeah, and that secret attorney has got up now, so she's walking up the stage. This is the she men's top. Oh, Dolin hasn't got that plus. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Maybe because of his, like, he didn't clip maybe. the one before? Yeah, maybe. There are appeals that can come through. We haven't been informed of any at the moment, but sometimes the semi-final will finish and then the appeals come, so just be aware of that. Wow, is approaching. It's crazy, isn't it? He's so close to everyone else, and yet he's still in 10th fit. He misses that side pull. Right, your gold medalist from Boulder, Annie Sanders. And we just talked to her. There's some in-depth uh, look at the boulders. We put two of them in full, pretty much, so you can go and see how she won that competition. And it's great with Annie because she's a bit shy on camera sometimes, but she's starting to come out and be of her shell a little bit, and it was, it's great. So go watch that, please, if you haven't already. But she showed me her skin, and her skin was terrible, really bad after the boulder round. And I know she had a day off on Friday when speed was going on, but yesterday she climbed, so I'll have to wait and see on that. Kai Se Homa. Any secrets? Any secrets? Uh, he cooks well. <laughs> that is a secret. He cooks in his own, for like his own diet. Uh -huh. He controls it like, pretty well. What does he cook? Chicken. <laughs> Chicken breast. Okay. Like everyone who works out might have all the time. <laughs> there we go. I'll have to get a recipe off you. Now, Annie tends to lead climb her way through boulder problems like she did in the finals. And now we're seeing if she can lead climb her way through a lead route. She does occasionally get timed out. She got timed out yesterday on one of the routes. She is being quite slow here. Just making sure of it. But not, yeah. Not enjoying this one. If she can avoid jumping, she will. <laughs> at all costs. <laughs> not that she can't jump. No, she's good at it. She's really good at it. Yeah. And she's got much taller than the past year mm -hmm. as well. And she looks like she has longer arm span too. Yeah, some of, uh, chatting to her, some of the, because she kept doing this static method through the boulder problems, but some of that was mm. skin. She just didn't want to jump into it and rip the skin. Mm. I didn't know that. I thought she chose that, like, static method. I know which border you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the, the, the red and white one. one. Mm. And I thought she chose it because she didn't want to jump. But yeah, me too. I didn't know that for skin. Yeah, I thought exactly the same thing, and yeah, she told me, but... And we did see a bit of a blood incident in the semis from her. Mm. Hopefully she's right. Yeah, the, so the fiberglass, the flat hole fiberglass here in Korea are so rough. Like, I bled um, my first day of, like, comp setting once. <laughs> wow. Just, like, grabbing into maybe, like, five times. Mm -hmm because of how rough it was. And then there were a lot of like jumping moves into those FRP, like fiberglass holds. So every time I watch people go for it, I was like, no. Yeah. Well, the athletes really put their bodies on the line here in the sport. Annie 
has been very slow and precise with this, and she's going to have to be on this next section. We've seen quite a few fall here. Gets in the left heel, creeps her way up, and bumps that right foot onto the jib. That's the right foot that we don't want to see her fall. Oh no, hold your breath, everyone. And Tyson's been up here for a good pace, I think. I recognize himself as a good pacer. He has his own pace. And he has his own like, calmness that he gets in when he's in the zone. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's talked to me before about you know not finding his flow and struggling with it. Yeah. He, he's one of those who I think just needs to feel it. Okay, Annie reaches up onto the white hold. She's now into 11. Mattia Pozzi is pushed out of the top eight, by the way, so no final streak for her. Tyson also trying to get to the high point that we've been seeing. He's close. It's all oh, different foot here. Stretching on it. He's going that side pull and holds it. Right, see if he can get through it. Brings the left foot up. There's a dish with a jib in it above his head. He wants the left toe on. No. The high point. I would call that a pass. Should be. <laughs> it really should be. Four to go for the men. Annie Sanders, meanwhile, has been climbing really slow, really precise. And she's about to hit the crux, but is in tenth. Brings the right foot up. I think that is the better method, you know. Does what you said. Flagging. Crosses through. This is good from Annie. Nasty crimp to come, though. That's the shoulder engagement I've been talking about. Like your elbow is out, but your shoulder is in. This is a hard move into the black. She makes it. Wow, Annie is on form right now. She's cruising it. Oh, that's a bit of rope drag, I think, in the system, and now unleashes itself. It's a pretty. I think it's this angle at the bottom means the rope is hard to pull through. Look at her elbow. Wow. I'm always so amazed by we climbers after their elbow starts to go out, mm -hmm. and they still make a couple more moves. This is a fight from her, but this is going to be finals. Left toe on nothingness as she makes the clip. That's the last clip. Bumps out the right foot. And another push here. And she makes it work. This, I don't know what the time is. We don't have access to it on the live stream, but she's got to be coming close to that. Into nasty crimps now. Dual text to come. She stands up on the ball. Left toe on. Okay, now I think she's going to try to switch here. Or inside flagging. Oh, look at this from Annie. Sticks it. It's going to be a top as long as she isn't timed that out. That is amazing. Has she timed out? I don't know. I don't think so. Well, we don't know, but the old, come on, drags the rope up, gets it in, and that's the top for Annie Sanders. Impressive stuff. Our gold medalist, <laughs> really on form. FSC staff, so she told me in an interview afterwards, so that's straight from, uh, from her mouth to us here in the poetry box. Right. He's the person to watch for you, then, right? Giovanni, yeah, I was really impressed with him during qualis. Yeah, he looked pretty solid on one of the harder routes in the Collier flying round for many yesterday. Yeah, he did. And uh, let's see if he's recovered from yesterday's performance. Because sometimes we see that when an athlete really sort of outperforms themselves, that they've almost pushed it too far. Yu Tong Zan comes out as well. He was the first person out who's topped both routes in the qualifying round. And she, ooh, look at this from Giovanni, they're crossing underneath. This is, that. he's in some trouble here, you know. Comes out and now kicks the right foot over. He was already resting quite a bit in those cramps before him. Yeah, he's made lots of semi-finals this year, but really kind of outside of the top 15 throughout. Oh, he does slip off that. Yeah, you're right. And look down at his skin immediately. I just wonder if, you know, that performance in qualies that he couldn't recover from, he'd almost overexerted himself. But he is out. Three to go for the men. And Yu Tong Zhang, as you said, underway for the women. 
a little longer for the women. We've got five athletes left. The route taking more time, and we're rotating the athletes through now as they fall. We changed things up there. In the beginning, we weren't. Yes, Yutong, I watched her qualify for the Olympics in Jakarta for the Asian qualifier. Oh, she was that was such amazing performance from her. I think she was surprised, but she was surprised, you know, very emotional and couldn't quite believe it, but she's not done that particularly smooth. Hit the match on the big pocket. She's been also training in Japan as well. A lot of like top Chinese athletes has been training in Japan, having Japanese coaches, and they speak better Japanese than they speak English. Yeah. I've tried to communicate with her in English, but we have easier time to speak in Japanese. Now, Serato Anraku comes out. You talked at the beginning of the broadcast about him changing his style at the moment, trying new things. And with Serato, you just never know. Sometimes he's utterly dominant. And other times he makes big mistakes and falls. Of course, he's fairly new to his career. You know, he was still, what is he, 17 now? So he's still I think learning. So. Yeah. So we'll have to see which Serato is on stage <laughs> right now. Yun Tong not looking that comfortable yet as she goes through the 55. It's been quite a while figuring out that sequence. Mm. these crimps and we'll continue upwards here the condition report for you if you're watching at home and I know there's quite a few of our European audiences who have <laughs> managed to uh, join us now as things are a little bit later on I think we started at 6am there so it's a nice Saturday morning for you Sunday morning isn't it all right Serato with the left toe hook comes up to the right hand side on that jib and Yutong is picking the pace up just a little bit now healing of the We're nearing that point, mate. The scary point. Yeah, I'm trying not to watch. I'm focusing on Serato because I don't want I don't want to see another fall there. <laughs> Alright. I'll, I'll, I'll watch that. You watch Serato. How about that? But most people who went through without slipping have been having their themselves on the volume, mm -hmm. not on the foothold. So maybe that hold that they were grabbing on with their hands our door attacks on the part they can actually step on. Yeah, maybe. And she is trusting the volume a lot. She's going back and forth. So, I mean, she won't know, of course, that a lot of people have fallen here, but we know. So increasing our heart rates here. She's still on the volume. Please move forward from it. Right, now she goes. <laughs> Kicks the right foot up, puts in a heel. Serato. Amazing drop me here. Oh, this flexibility is great, isn't it? I think Serato is in dominant Serato form at the moment. Although we know he can fall out of nowhere. Yuton is matching the white sloper. I believe they are on the same height now. If you were to see the full screen. And Serato will secure himself in final. He can get 36. Mm -hmm. Since there's only two more people to come out. So the crowd get behind okay, Serato. So this he's is definitely the dominant Serato here. Yeah, he's back, isn't he? Up to 36. I think the score will be updated now. He's on the high point and into the head. Well, Yutong as well. This is really exciting stuff. Both athletes, Yutong. No, she looked low and hadn't made that clip yet. Almost had it, though. That was impressive. Mm -hmm. And this is the part I had a hard time reading from the bottom because I didn't know there was a crimp on the right hand. Yeah, then uber stacked crimps there above his head. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's such a nasty, it's kind of a slopey crimp. Palms down. Bit of a shake now, he's gonna have to battle if he wants to get to the top. Creeps that left hand up and brings the right in. He should be able to clip from here and I think that's the last clip. And we only got two more holds here. Mm -hmm. 
do you think we're going to see the top? We haven't for a while and we're not going to again for the men as Serato falls, but yes. Right, Erin McNeese comes through. I think it's been just a lot to handle. I mean, this year's been her breakout year and mm -hmm. suddenly you move from being unknown yeah. to everyone talking about you. Yeah. It's a big change around her, for herself. And I think she's still trying to catch up to what she's like achieved mm, exactly. in the past season. Yeah, I think she'll be looking forward to the end. I mean, she's an Olympic finalist. She did OQS. She's competed everywhere, it seems. It's time for Erin to uh, chill just a little bit. But she'll want to make finals here. She was on the podium, of course, the other day. Yes, it was her first Border World Cup medal for her. Yeah. Right, Sam Abazu. We saw his sister fall early, earlier on in our semi-final. Sam qualifying in second place for this semi-final. Looking the feet through here. Both Olympians. Yes, both Olympians. Yep. Yeah, Sam didn't have, like, he wanted to do more at the Olympics. You know, it was his home crowd. He mm -hmm. was disappointed. But since then, he's just come back with such a vengeance into the comp scene. And, you know, the medals he's got since then. I mean, we've got Vilar's double gold. Sorry, well, double gold, triple medal, silver in lead, copper, bronze medal. The last couple of comps in the boulder, he didn't quite get to where he normally would, 11th in Prague and 15th in Seoul. So it'd be good to see him back in the final if he can get there. And Erin rotates through. She's also got to be struggling with skin and fatigue a little bit. And her teammates Diane and Max not in the semi-final. Yeah. Competed in both competed in border final with her. Yeah. And Max won second his his second silver medal in the border World Cup. Yeah, Max really enjoying Korean uh, setting and also just, well, just loves Korea it seems. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Erin, let's see here. She's climbed pretty slowly so far. I think all the top ladies have done that at the moment. You know, you've yeah. just got to be careful down low. Oh, all the way up to the top. Um, yeah, one top for the women's and a close one from Serato. Sam's picking the pace up here a little bit now. He starts to motor. Yeah, hitting the side pull as well. Oh, this is what she's got to be careful. Yeah, the heel would have been really dangerous there. I'm losing my voice right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sam falls. Wow, that came out of nowhere. He's down. Well, we'll have to wait for the scores to see where he ends up. But I'm not sure. It's that round about that 35, 36 is very contested right now. May is on the scoreboard. Yeah, here we go. That's for the women we're seeing. Aaron McNeese. Moves up to 13th. Where's Sam at? Seventh. Wow. Oh, no, it should be good then. Yeah. So he's safe. She on a matter to come. So job done for Sam, but ooh, that was close. Erin looks down at the clock here. She's in 13th. Needs to get up to 34 plus to make it into the final as it stands. But three athletes to go for the women. Finals taking place at 8 p.m. Korean time. What time is that in European time? Absolutely no idea. But you know, you knew that this was 6 a.m. <laughs> I know. Someone told me that. I, I tell you what, I've got Google in front of me. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a little look. In the meantime, Erin, <laughs> proceeding out the way to the part where we've been losing a lot of people. 1 p.m. by the way, if you're watching. Lunch time. Lunch, exactly. So have some lunch and come back and watch us. Erin managing to find a rest here before the women's crux. 
I'm surprised Annie made the top look as good as she did. You know, it didn't seem like there is any more cruxy sequences after this move. It seems like this is the one. She's just a relatively one of the taller persons to compete in the semi final side. So curious what move she's trying to choose. Oh, she's got the slopey pinch. Making it work. And that will be finals place for Erin as well. So two in a row for her. Just into the black pinch as well. And she'll clip from here and then the top sequence to come. And one more quick draw as well. You can just see it there on our camera. I love her fight on each, like both border and lead. Her face always look a little concerned mm. and she just makes it work. Yeah, worried. I think she always looks <laughs> just like a little bit, oh. oh, that was a bit of a mistake. She tried to get a right heel up. You got to fall into that hole. Yeah. Yeah, that's better from Erin. She works it out. Wow. Yeah, she wanted to get a high heel in. Now we'll match the sloper, hug it, and flip the feet over to the right. Last couple of moves and a clip to come for Erin. Let's go, Erin! Checking the time. Yeah, she'll be coming close. Oh. oh, and falls there. Well, that doesn't really matter in terms of the final. And she and Omato started climbing. The final athlete out. His mum and his younger brother is out here in Korea to watch him compete. There's a great story about Shield Amata, which I've got to repeat, which was during Copper, he was fishing in the sea between <laughs> us, which I just think is so cool. So this time for his first climb, before his first climb, he was ready to go. Uh -huh. And we saw him on the stage and we lost him. And second, it turns out he didn't have his harness on. Right. On the sea. Like, two people before, like, it was his turn. Uh -huh. And he ran back with the harness on himself. And he topped the roof. That's amazing. But beforehand, I met him briefly because he was going back and forth between the bathroom mm -hmm. and the stage. And he was like, I'm so nervous. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And maybe the harness thing was the key. Maybe. He's quite a character, isn't he? I think we've discovered from that little conversation. Yeah. He is shy to new people and doesn't talk a lot to female, mm -hmm. like athletes. But he's really close with Dohyun Lee. They've trained together in Japan. They had lunch together in Seoul yesterday. Ai Mori gets a big reaction as she walks on. She's a very popular figure. Well, throughout the world, but especially here, it seems, in Korea. Mm -hmm. She's started to smile on camera. I, I like putting Ai Mori on camera. Like, you'd think she'd be very shy, and yet she's not. She really likes to talk and mm -hmm. tell you what she's feeling. And she said she is kind of a little ashamed that she can't express as much as she's feeling in English because she can't understand what people have been asking her about but she can't really get like her real emotions out mm, because she's just lacking the vocabulary yet. Okay. Well, she's underway in climbing here. Final three women. I'm Ori, Jessie Peltz and Shan So to go. This is the last male athlete she on Omata. Good flexibility from him as well. Tension in that left leg as he presses off the Gaston. I am a little nervous right now because I've known him since he was seven. Oh. Do you think this kind of a route would suit him, looking at it? Yeah. But it's also, for me, I can't really expect when he falls. Mm. Like, he sometimes has kind of like a slip, unexpected slip, and loses himself. And sometimes he's like really, really secure. He did that move well. Dragging the right foot across the wall just to slow the movement down. And gets a clip in. That's smart. Oh, now he's changing his mind. So this could be awkward for him because it's a nasty one to clip from, wrapping that left hand around. He's not even looking at the clip. He's just going for points. But that clip is going to be a nightmare from this position. Yeah. It's still enough for him to secure his spot in final. There we go. So the men confirmed as it stands, remember? Things might change. We'll let you know if they do.
happened in Prague when Erin got pushed out of the finals place. So from now on, for the next couple of athletes, we will just stick with the women as I launches into the side pool as she approaches the angle change for 55 degrees. I don't think Erin was climbing that slow, but she timed out like five moves before. Oh, wow, okay. I think that's why she like jumps down. I see. Yeah, we don't have access to a clock on the live stream. We can't actually see a clock from our position in the commentary box. That's why we're a bit unsure ourselves. But I just kind of wanted to say that like that's how tall this wall is. Yeah. Like you don't look like you're climbing that slow. Yeah, it but says six minutes is such a short time. It is indeed, and it says 15 meters on the graphic, but I was told it's more like 17 meters. So it's a really big wall. And with the steepness too, it only adds more meters to climb on. Absolutely. My eye is looking comfortable, I'd say, so far. Good bread, good performance. <laughs> that salted bagel clearly doing its work. I'm still mind blown by the sweet bagel, by the way. I should have brought one here today. Absolutely, you should. Eye sets herself, hits the side pit. And that foot is smeared with rubber. So many athletes have slipped or fallen on this move. And for the first time, I looks in. Oh, what? She, she's a crossing. I'm not sure about that, mate. I'm not going to say anything about it now. Oh, it's too stressed about the, her right foot at the moment. <laughs> she looked like she had it in, but everyone looked like they had it in and yeah. they had the slip. I think once they're standing on it though, like she's doing, it's more okay. We're zooming in there to look at that hole. And you can see there is no text down there. And the volume itself, very angled and slippy, not a lot of friction. And she's made the hand swap. I was worried about that. She needs to go left and she was right. So she's made that adjustment. Still trusting the volume. And now make her breathe again as she comes up. I know I don't really have to worry about her third placement because every time she looks like she's about to sleep, she never sleeps. But at the same time, it just like freaks me out every time she has like very edgy foot placement because of her height. Yeah. She's a centimeter taller than me, by the way. Oh, really? She's taller than you? Yeah. Wow. One feet to four. You don't cut. You don't seem that. So I don't mean to be offensive. You don't come over as that small, man. You've, you've got big personality. All right, I'm Mori. Adjust the feet, and now she's having to fight a little bit. But she's hit the left hand, and that's important. And she'll love the next crimp. Dragging up the rope, and making that clip there with that sloper. That's impressive. Now, I've just managed to reposition myself so I can see a clock. So we're coming up to a minute 10 for I Mori. So that's actually quite a lot of time on this headwalk. Choosing a different foot placement for her to get past. And she's check checking the clock. Yeah, 55 Realizing seconds. that she's only had less than a minute. She did climb slow, but like, not that slow. I think she timed it really well. And easily does this hug move across. Claws her way onto this crimp side pull and will pop up as she comes up to 30 seconds now left on the clock. Left foot up. That mobility and the strength in that flexibility is what I'm always amazed by. I'm Murray. She's only got 20 seconds though, so she needs to go fast here. And I think she's going to get timed out. 14 yeah. seconds. Last 10 seconds now for I Mori. She's on the crimp. And no, that is the end of I Mori's time. She'll still probably finish things out. She falls on these side pulls. At the event. So if you are in the area, do pop down. There's a lot to do here. As a sort of a pull-up challenge that a huge queue of people seem to be doing every time I go past it. And of course, opportunity to meet the athletes. So this is I on the top. The last couple of moves, she was just about to get timed out here. Had about six seconds on the clock. 
I have a feeling she probably didn't commit quite as much to that. She must have known she was mm -hmm. timing out. Okay, Jessie Pilts comes out onto the stage. She is one who is going for the overall title for 2024. Like Jakob and Jessie Pilts has always been, they've always been like semi-final or final in any comp, as long as I remember. Exactly, it'd be so weird if they didn't. And she's medaled recently as well, silver and copper. In fact, last couple in of bronze in Olympics, right? Yes, I was about to say, there's that little matter of the Olympic bronze medal. She just peaked for that competition really that, well. Yeah. Her performance, especially in bordering, mm. like shined. It did, because she had a season where you couldn't sort of figure out where she was at. You know, she didn't do that many comps. She was in and out a bit. And yeah, just great stuff from Jesse. She was 15th in Boulder as well the other day, which is not bad. And we'd expect her to get through here with no real issues. As we've seen, it's saving energy down low. Twists that right leg and just locks in the toe. Does it really quite statically? That I mean, I know she then flew, but she had that toe in a long time. She seems to be relatively faster than the past three climbers up. I'd agree. Rain went away. Did it? I think so. Certainly less heavy. I'm trying to look out and find see some rain now. <laughs> it's hard to spot rain. And certainly it doesn't usually show up on our cameras, so it can be quite difficult if you're watching at home to know. That's why I try to update you with condition reports. Jesse spins into that blocked hold. Comes out with the left. Wow, pretty focused on Jesse. Here. Quite tense here in the stadium right now. Probably because everyone knows that she's getting into this like stressful section <laughs> yep. with where a lot of people have been slipping. Yeah, adjusting that right leg. She now starts to try it just a little bit harder here. The lat heel, the heel will be so solid. She's brilliant at these heel hooks. Yeah, there's been a couple of different methods and then the one that looks like that's been working is the cross that she just tried to do. And she chose a different method now. Yeah, a little adjustment. It is tricky there. She's got the right foot on the jib though, so that's good. It's really low on this volume. Both feet trusting holds rather than the volume. Very static as she brings that right foot up. You can see those Olympic rings on her right ankle. This is pretty controlled by Jessie, and she's got lots of time, just under three minutes. Well, she got here quite fast. Yeah. Well, time here by Jesse. That heel is in underneath. Comes up into the pocket, buries the fingers into it. That was so simple, but the feet, they're not quite right yet. And the foot match is risky. The right foot is better. Hasn't got a clip yet, mate. Jesse's in trouble here. Sticking it. But it's so low. She can make that clip no, she's not. Or she's just going for it. She's past it and in trouble. But I mean, she's in the finals place, so she's okay. But she can definitely make moves. This is going to be an enormous fall as well if she goes from here. It's a massive one. She's still going. Oh, wow. That is smart from Jesse Pilt. I thought she missed it. Up. Work. Oh. That is so impressive. And that also comes with the experience. Yeah, didn't panic, did she? Mm -hmm. She knew that the black hole was good enough and then the right foot was quite in a better spot. Just reach down and grab the draw and bring it up to her, which you can do. You can't wait the quick draw, but you can grab it and put it into a position. Good stuff from Jesse. And her final comp of the year. Just one athlete to go here as we watch this replay. Yeah, it's so far away from the quick draw. It would have been huge. 
did fall on the... So the final athlete will cause this crowd to go wild. Shen So walks onto the stage. Right, those shoe protectors off her feet. She pulls off the ground. Our final athlete for the semi-final is underway. And in about four and a half hours, we will do the lead final. As we've now discovered, 1 p.m. Central European time, 8 p.m. Seoul time. Co-commentator. Hey, Nakamura here in the commentary box. Uh, route setter. <laughs> Japanese team spy. <laughs> I think you're returning for finals later on as well. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Flowing through these sequences. Absolutely no issues from her so far. She gets in a, a good heel underneath. It'd be really nice for her home crowd to be watching just herself as the last person to come out in semi-final. Yeah, and especially after Jeanne's early slip. Yeah. And these two have been competing together. Remember when she missed the clip in Chamonix and Jeanne won instead of her? Mm -hmm. Well, not instead of her. We never would have known, obviously. But yeah, it was, uh, these two have been climbing together for quite a while. And it's always good to see that. I think they help each other, and Jan definitely sort of the veteran who can show the way. Yeah, so she trusts that left toe. Get up, angle change time. In the middle section of this wall, quite long. This middle part before the main head wall. I think I really love her. Uh, the problem solving on site. She's been always looking at the next options and trying to find the best positions because you can only feel it once you're on the wall. Mm -hmm. Like you can expect how they're going to be and what it's going to feel like. But sometimes you have to change what you thought it would go and sometimes you have to like try something completely different. And yeah. then she looks, seems to be really brave for that. Yeah, I think so. She's just kind of widens her vision, you know. She can see more than just the holes in front of her. But in this move, so I'm just going to stay quiet. <laughs> okay, she trusts the volume. This is roundabout where Jeanne fell. It's all good at the moment. Right foot on. She's with this one. Trust those feet well and moves through that nervy sequence up towards the white. Final white hold now, and the crux to come. So hopefully she's well rested here. She's climbing her way towards the final. Where's she at now, May, in terms of score? She is still in 16. So a bit of work to do. There we go. Score's shown. She needs to get to 34 plus, where lots of athletes have done. Up she comes with a right. This is the moment. Can she do it in front of her home crowd? struggling just a little bit here and she's readjusting which is worrying bumps that right hand no she doesn't so this was her down low there's no issues nice moves at the bottom but rosa made it to finals is yes it, is it her first final? i think it might be for seniors certainly you know rosa record great performance we'll get the results in a couple of minutes or seconds really as we watch that top four yeah that was the block you said with the right knee well, here are the results then. Serato Anraku leading the way over Taisai Homa. Shiona Mata, Dohyan Lee, Yuta Imazumi, Paul Jemf and Yoshiki Ogata and Sam Avazu make up our top eight. And then Zinta Murashita through Oscar Baudra down in 17th. Max Berton and Medj quite a way outside in 19th and 20th. And then down to the bottom, Jonas Yubin Min couldn't do it in front of his home crowd. And Ai Mori leads the way, 44. Annie Sanders getting timed out, so that score not a top. Erin McNeese on 41. Jesse Piltz, Rosa Rekka, second final for her. Yu Tong Zhang is in a final. Shen So and Jilu Lo. And they're moving down. Mia Krampo, she can't join her teammates. And neither can Sara Chopper inside of the top eight. And Zelia Avazu, we saw her slip very low, as did Futaba and Natsuki Tani, all on 27. Kelet Smetanova down the bottom, as is Kamina Moroni.